Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Glad to be with you for this week's edition of Takedown. Last month, David Carr lost his semifinals match at the UWW Junior Nationals, and according to Carr, it was a much-needed wake-up call and a moment that prepared him for Fargo. The seventh-ranked senior was named the outstanding wrestler of the junior freestyle division. He secured five tech falls on his way to the title. After edging out Indiana's Joe Lee in the semis, Carr capped a dominant performance with a 13-3 win against Wisconsin's Tyler Dow. So you wrestled at the junior trials and so you wrestled a lot of high high level competition and you took third there. You know, what did you take from that that you brought into this? Uh, I learned a lot. It humbled me and uh, got me ready, uh, ready for this tournament. I was happy with my result but not satisfied. You said that you were humbled there. How often does that happen to a guy of your talent? Uh, it doesn't happen too much, but I'm, I'm glad it happened. So it got me motivated for this. There was only one repeat champ in the field and it was Florida's Anthony Artelona. Trailing 3-0 in the 145-pound finals, Artelona scored six unanswered, sealing the victory with a big four-point throw. My mindset is just take it one, one takedown at a time, because usually points come in flurries. So if you get a takedown, you get a gut, you're, you're back in it, you know? So um, just don't, don't look and think, oh, there's no way I'm coming back into this. He'll slip up, um, you'll hit a nice move, you, you'll be back in the match quickest, pretty fast, you know? Just, I don't know. In what started as a defensive battle, New Jersey's Will Guida took out Jackson Cockrell of Oklahoma in the 100-pound finals. Guida surrendered the first points on a step out, but found his opening midway through the first and used a takedown and a step over to secure the victory. In the pin, in the finals, yeah. biggest stage. I mean, how's that feel? Uh, crazy. I'm down one nothing. He felt really strong, so I, I knew I had to counter off of his attacks. I couldn't get to my sweep like I want to, so I got, like Corey Cooperman always says, like, you gotta make it happen. Let's go to 106 pounds. Alabama's Sam Latona became the first junior national champ in state history. He cruised to a 12 2 tech over Connecticut's Christopher Trelli. You are the first Alabama guy to do this. Do you ever feel like you are an underdog when you come to Savannah just because of where you are from? You know, Alabama guys, I don't think they get enough respect. So, But I mean, I, I'm confident in myself, so not really. Why are you confident in yourself? Because I work harder than everyone. I, I truly believe that. I truly believe I work hard. I'm the hardest working kid in the country. Maryland's Aaron Brooks turned in an impressive performance when he topped Pennsylvania's Trent Hidley 13-3 in the final round at 170. All right, Aaron Brooks, uh, you've been big there a couple of times in that finals match, man. You have some fun out there? A lot of fun, you know. After, you know, I didn't mean to poke him in the eye. Then I got that first thing, it was a push out. I felt that I was stronger and I was just, I was better and I was faster. And I, I started smiling after that. If you watch the tape, I realized I'm better than him. I knew it right from the start. Right when I felt him, I knew I was going to get him. Let's go to 132. Arizona's Hadalano Escobar picked up the first period tech against Washington's Alexander Cruz. All right, Adelano Escobar, you got the job done, man. Tech fall in the finals. Uh, you know, what was working for you? Is that pretty much how you drew it up? Um, well, my pulls were working for me. That's what I was working a lot with Andrew Zahudo. Um, just to be strong in the fundamentals. And I knew, like, I could expose him because he steps a lot. He's, like, not really sure with his balance, so I know I could get in. Our coverage of the Freestyle Junior Nationals continues after this timeout. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Casey's General Stores. Casey, famous for pizza. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting, and you should too.
All right, welcome back to the show. Our coverage of the Freestyle Junior Nationals continues. We go to 152. That's where Illinois' Will Luan rallied back to defeat North Dakota's Jared Franick, trailing 2-1 with under a minute left in the bout. Luan used a step out to take the lead on criteria and then tacked on a late takedown to seal the win. Talk about your composure there at the end of the match. Uh, well, I've been in a lot of close matches, so I know what it takes. And like crunch time in the match, what you gotta do, you gotta keep composure and just keep wrestling. Wrestling your match. And I knew that I was down and I had to keep going. I had to keep attacking and whatever that took, if it was a push out or in the end making him make a mistake and capitalizing off that. Cadet World Bronze medalist Jacob Warner went untested on his way to the 195-pound crown. The nation's seventh-ranked senior picked up six tech falls in the tournament, including an 11-point shutout in the finals. Do you feel like you uh, learned anything by yourself or, or over the you know, last couple days? What was your biggest takeaway for you? Uh, I just need to keep wrestling hard. I, I got taken, taken down twice the first day, so there's obviously something I need to fix on my feet. So just trying to get some, something new to work on after every match. You look pretty big. Are you going to stay at 195 for Greco or slide to 220? I'm coming back down. Uh, I could have stayed up, had the option, but Jace Bucky's at 220. I think he's wanting to win a national title. So my teammate, my wrestling partner, my high school teammate, so I'm not going to come up. So hopefully we both win it. Another future Hawkeye out of Illinois, Anthony Cassiope, battled North Dakota's Brandon Metz in the final round at 285. Trailing 1-1 on criteria, Cassiope hit a takedown with just a minute left and won his very first Fargo crown 4-1. Got the job done there. It's it a tight match, you know, and uh, it came down to the end, but uh, yeah. the feeling, you, you got it done on the Fargo stage. How's it yeah. feel? It feels good, you know. It's not what I was hoping for exactly, you know, but... It feels great. Fargo's been my goal, you know. I haven't had a candy bar since I lost last year. I made a deal with myself, no candy bars until I win it. It's going to be nice having a Snickers bar after this. A Snickers bar. That's <laughs> yes. All right. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. You, you text him in Vegas. What was different this time around? Um, I don't know. He just, he was just hard to attack, really. He, he didn't oh, open up much. He was trying to wrestle me Draco, and he was keeping his legs back. He's got that big body, and it kind of hides his legs. Minnesota's Patrick McKee finally put a halt to Illinois' title run with a second period pin over Joey Melendez. McKee broke a 2-2 tie with counter exposure and then turned Melendez and powered his way to the pin. You've been so close so many times at the national level. How did you stay focused on going through the process and finally get the job done? Um, my brother was a big help towards that. He was multiple, he's multiple time national champ. He wins this, that. You know, that kind of motivated me. Seeing in his room, he has all the big plaques. I wanted one myself. I was ready to get one. Two Michigan commits, and I'm talking about Drew Matten and Ben Freeman. Well, they found their way to the top of the box. Matten took out Indiana's Paul Conrath, 8-1 in the 126-pound finals, and then Freeman followed with an 11-point tech fall over Jeremy Schoenher. That yeah, was in the title round at 138. How, do, how does the win here help you as you, you know, head into your college career? Uh, I mean, it's just, it was just something, I don't know if it really affects my college career. I mean, if I would have gotten second or didn't place, it's not like whatever. I don't think that would affect my college career, but it's just always been something that's been something I needed to get done. Mm -hmm. More like a personal goal. I just want to say that I won Fargo, so I'm not going to do that. I chose to come here because, I mean, I got... I don't know why, but I wasn't a top 100 recruit. Um, you think six, you should have been? Six-time Fargo American. I don't really care that much because I'm, I'm where I want to be and I got the job done, but it does sting a little bit. Nevada's Ty Smith overcame a 6-0 deficit, scoring 17 unanswered points, and he defeated Washington's Brandon Kaler 17-6. Smith is just the second Nevada wrestler ever to win a junior national freestyle title and the first since 1988. When you hear about the stuff of the historic, about being just a second from Nevada, what does that mean? It, it means a lot. It, we, before coming into this tournament, we, we've never had a junior freestyle finalist. And it, it, it makes it that much more special, and it made me want it that much more. Future Boilermaker Max Lyon took home the title at 182 with a 10-3 victory over Illinois' Jack Jessen. Max, you credit the Iowa fans for providing support, yet the, the colleges in that state lost you. How? Uh, you know, I had a really tough decision with the colleges in Iowa, especially you and I. They're great school, great guys, but 
at the end of the day, Purdue was best fit for me. So what do you expect there with really, what Ursland's doing, a uh, former Hawkeye speaking yeah. of which? What, is, what do you like about what's going to happen in West Lafayette? You know, I mean, Iowa blood is in West Lafayette. There's a lot of Osage guys around, but there's some from Humble. And, you know, I just like his philosophy of always aggressive, and I feel like the things that I've just learned in the last month really helped me win that title. Two-time Missouri State champ Zach Elam took home the stop sign at 220 with a 14-4 tech over Oregon's Hayden Maley. You know, I would never thought, you know, sitting at home watching this, I'd be here, you know, winning a title. And, you know, my opponent, Hayden, he, he's a stud. And I, I, I'll be honest, I was worried. But, uh, he, he's, he's, good, he's good. I have a lot of respect for him. He's a stud. And, you know, it, it's just it's amazing what you can do. And, you know, put your body through, work smart, work hard. You know, you can, you can do anything. With three champions, 16 All-Americans, and 82 points, Illinois took home the team title followed by Ohio in a distant second with 37 points and Iowa with 36. Now you can watch every match from the Cadet and Junior Nationals, Women's, Freestyle, and Greco. It's all free on USA Wrestling's YouTube channel. Just head over to the address you see on your screen. All right, we're going to take a quick time out. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to McBride Men. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure. Stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. All right, welcome back to Takedown. The National Wrestling Hall of Fame's feature documentary series continues with meritorious official recipient Mike Haggerty. With 25 years of service to the sport, Haggerty has worked the Division I championship since 2003 and is literally one of the top high school coaches in the world. I grew up in a very small town, uh, Higginsville, Missouri, just outside of the Kansas City area. My parents were a huge influence in my life, my father especially who was uh, always there for me. My parents both always there, but my dad was the guy that kind of like supported me from the very beginning in, in the sport of wrestling. I uh, started in wrestling in a kind of a unique way. Um, my high school wrestling coach actually met me outside of the basketball meeting on the first day of the sport, sport season. And uh, he just came up to me and basically said, you will be at wrestling practice on Monday. And I was, I was afraid of him. He intimidated me. I was scared to tell him no. Uh, I had desire to play basketball as my freshman year when I went to high school. But uh, that, that's basically what got me started in wrestling. 
My high school career was a good career. I enjoyed it. Uh, tremendous opportunities. Uh, wrestled in a very small town, again, Higginsville. Uh, I ended up being a state champion my senior year. I, I guess the next uh, phase of my life began when I went to college. On my uh, final recruiting trip to Central Missouri State, I met with head coach Roger Dinker. And we actually had an opportunity to play some golf together. And uh, after we played, um, he put a scholarship form in front of me, a room scholarship to go to Central Missouri State. And at that point, I told him, I'm not real sure that this is still what I want to do. And uh, at, that, at that time, Coach Dinker said uh, in, his, in his wisdom that if I chose not to go to Central Missouri State, that uh, I needed to pay my own green fees. And uh, I didn't have a penny on me, and he handed me the pen, and I signed at Central Missouri State University. I had an incredible experience in college. Um, it kept me hungry in the sport. And immediately after college, I served one year as a graduate assistant at Central Missouri, and then continued to coach for the next seven years as head coach at UCM. There's no question in my mind that being a wrestler, uh, being a coach, has helped me become a better official. I think it's, it's, it works both ends. Um, I, I'm a better coach, I think, because of my officiating, and I also think it's the other way as well. Uh, those opportunities presented being on the mat with some of the greatest wrestlers in the world uh, definitely helps me in my coaching experiences. I've had an opportunity to work a lot of high-profile competitions, uh, including the NCAA Division I championships since 2003. Um, I don't know what those numbers bring, is how many years it's, I've been involved. I've also had a chance to, to officiate the Big 12s uh, and the Pac 12s, and those opportunities are amazing. Probably one of the most memorable experiences in officiating was just this past year uh, in Madison Square Garden. Uh, you know, I was looking forward to the opportunity to go to Madison Square Garden, be a part of that experience. You have to live in the moment when that whistle sounds from the very beginning of the match making sure that you're diligent about staying on top of the rules, making sure that um, you are very active in the match and, and making sure that you are on top of your game each and every time. About the time you think that you have, it's, it's an easy match or it's gonna go slowly, then things begin to get unraveled. You really have to check your ego at the door. Uh, you have so many things happening in a match that challenge you as a person, challenge you, your character challenges everything, uh, your knowledge of the sport. And so your ego, if it's too big, it will get you into trouble. His background and knowledge of the sport and the rules, the way they're interpreted, the way they're applied, uh, mixed with uh, at his core is a man of integrity that wants to get it right for the combatants. He wants to get it right for those wrestlers. There are some times where the, the, when coaches challenge you that, uh, you know, coaches obviously have a valid point. I certainly think that as a coach, when I'm coaching, uh, I believe I have a valid point or I wouldn't say what I had to say. So I do think that most officials do learn. I think you have to be very uh, careful about what you listen to, but at the same time, coaches make their points, and uh, I think people have to understand officials generally do listen to some of those things that they hear from the corner. You're always honest, you're fair, you're one of the best officials I've ever seen in this sport of wrestling, and I, I couldn't uh, hope for a better official when I had my guys at the national tournament. Uh, in coaching and in officiating, uh, if you think you're bigger than the sport, it'll knock you down in, in a second. This is something that um, I probably have learned more than anything else is just simple humility. The advice that I would give to people that are wanting to get into officiating would be patience and understand that uh, no two people are going to go at it exactly the same way. I certainly wouldn't advise uh, a young person getting into officiating to do it the way that I have, is to coach uh, at the high school level, coach internationally, and then also officiate. I think that Mike Haggerty will go down as being one of the best officials ever to officiate. He's very quick, and he, doesn't, he does not bring the camera to him. My, my family are actually the ones that have made the sacrifices. Uh, from my wife, Francesca, to Keenan, my son, uh, my three daughters, Mariah, Michaela, and Haley, uh, they're the ones that have actually made the commitment. I had the opportunity to travel and experience this great sport from all levels.
it means the world to me to, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame in Stillwater. I, there, there's, walking through the Hall of Fame and noting all of the people that have gone before me, uh, wrestlers, coaches, and officials, this, uh, this is the most memorable uh, moment in my life. Make sure to check out the National Wrestling Hall of Fame and Museum on Facebook for dozens of documentaries and other great features on the history of the sport. Stick around. Lou Roselli's up next. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Nike Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. We've said it before, there's an arms race going on in college wrestling and Oklahoma has a brand new weapon in its arsenal. Last week, Lou Roselli announced that Olympian and longtime Oklahoma State associate head coach Eric Guerrero would move to Soonerland and take over the RTC. Coach Roselli joined us on Takedown Radio last Saturday to talk about the decision and the rapid rise of the regional training center. How did this Eric Guerrero thing happen? Well, we've been friends a long time and um... You know, I think our, our values and views of the RTC, you know, are very similar. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, he's wanted to do something like this for a while. So I think it just it worked out well. Talk to us about your view of what a regional training center can do for a university. Well, it's a, it's a huge component these days. You know, um, providing a world-class, you know, environment for a student-athlete is, is a big deal. And the, some of the best student-athletes in the country and prospects want to be a part of that. You know, that... Um, so it's kind of like a one-stop shop, you know, obviously they're going to get an education, you know, they're, they're going to wrestle for the institution, but having the ability to wrestle for, you know, to wrestle beyond in, in their post-grad uh, years, is, it's a big deal, you know, and having the right environment and the right coaching and the right people on board with that, you know, makes it, you know, a big part of success for the college program. Well, with uh, in regards to the RTCs, you know, this it comes more and more, I guess, in the uh... – in the limelight, they've been around, but now everyone are, is talking about them. Talking about them in the press, the media is talking about them. You know, this could be something that the NCAA would ever look into a little bit more. Of, you know, can they regulate it a little bit uh, more so there's not so much crossover? Or is this something that you think is is going to stay and just continue to to thrive for college wrestling? Well, well, can they contain it and control it? Yes, of course. The NCAA can do do that easily. You know, but I do think that you know as they get bigger and bigger that. They'll need that, you know, we'll have to be in front of it a little bit, making sure that, you know, we keep them around, you know, and doing things to keep everybody on the, on, a, on the same playing field. So, you know, it's not – obviously, USA Wrestling monitors that, and the NCAA, they, they got a liaison between them, you know, that handles all that, you know. But I do think that, you know, you want to keep the playing fields fair enough so everybody, you know, can u utilize it and we can develop our young people. Bringing in Eric, was, was that – thing that I really excited about him is he can focus really 90% of his time on developing freestyle wrestlers now. Yeah, I mean, that, that's always a, a big part. That's why you're seeing a lot of institutions, you know, using a, uh, a guy that does just full-time RTC stuff and freestyle, you know, especially the head coach who's got a lot of other 
things he's got to do and, you know, managing the whole group and making, you know, the recruiting process and all the other things. So you're seeing that become more and more of a, an actual position. All right, special thanks to Gary Abbott, Richard Emmel, and the entire staff at USA Wrestling for all their great work at Fargo and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, our friends there as well. Don't forget, look for us on social media. Check out the website at TakedownWrestle.com for interviews, features, weekly prizes, and a lot more. And so from Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.